Hello everybody, I'm Oliver Picard and welcome to my workshop in beautiful Limousin, France. Before I get stuck in today, I just want to say thank you to everybody who's been so supportive of these videos, sharing them with friends, liking, leaving comments. It really means a lot to me. I'm in a non-English speaking country and making English speaking videos and so the entire popularity of these videos is down to you and my fantastically supportive community. So thank you for being a part of it. It, uh, it really, really means a lot to me. You are helping my dreams come true and uh, you're a, as big a part of this channel as I am because without you, I'm just a crazy man shouting at a camera. So thank you. Now, today I'm going to do something a little bit different because a lot of you in the comments have said that the, your favorite thing about my videos is the way that I go into detail and tell you what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And, and I explain through things. So today I'm going to do that. I'm going to explain the process of preparing for a roll cage and my process for designing a roll cage, why I'm doing things the way that I'm doing them so that when I start making a roll cage, things will make a lot more sense. So first things first, let's talk about roll cages. Now, here is the standard roll bar in Pandora. And the problem with using a roll cage on the street is that it can hit you in an accident and hitting your head on a roll cage in an accident is a massive problem because it'll kill you. So, you know, your head is approximately the same as a watermelon and you are hitting it with a large metal bar at speed. So if I get in Pandora, obviously no seat at the minute, but if I get in Pandora, all six foot six of me, with no seat, you can see how close to my head this metal bar is here. And in an accident, should my seat flex or fail, I would hit my head on the roll bar. And this is a huge problem, because obviously it'd kill me. So, we have to move our roll bar. And I need a datum point. I need a center point in the car to measure everything from. So I need a roll bar, but it can't go here. And I need a datum point. So how can I solve that? The way that I've solved it is I've moved the roll bar. I've moved it back here, actually to in the engine bay. This line here that I've scribed is my green datum point. This line is for you. There's a fine pencil line as well that the camera can't pick up. But I've scribed it in green so the camera can see it. And I'm moving the roll bar back away from me in the cabin to keep me safe. And it will also become the center point of the chassis, something that ties all the chassis together. So this is my center line where I'm measuring everything from. So if I get a piece of roll cage tubing, this is the piece from my tubing nutcher, I can show you that the roll bar will now start down here. It will run up, obviously inside the body. It will run up and it will end up there. It's going to end up at the back of the back window. Now, there are multiple reasons for this most of which are awesome and almost none of which I'm going to go into in this video because that would ruin the surprise. But the good thing is it gets it out and away from me. In fact, if I get a tape measure and I measure from the front of the roll bar to the front of where the new roll bar will be, that is four and a half inches roughly. So I'm moving this bar, which I would bash my head on, four and a half inches back and out of the way. Not only that, but it will be on the other side of the window. So it's out and it's away from me and it's much, much safer for me. But not only that, because it's now in the center point of the car, I can tie a lot of my chassis to it. So I can strengthen my roll bar with the rest of the car fantastic news and it will also help to stiffen up the chassis for when I put my whacking great engine in which if you haven't seen that video yet there'll be a link at the end of this one because this little car is going to have over 250 horsepower in her which is well over 200 wheel horsepower so she needs to be a lot stiffer than she once was and this is 
a thing that a lot of people who put modern engines in classic cars don't think about. There is a big difference between what was stiff in 1964 when this car was penned and what is considered stiff today. So stiffness is a hugely important thing when you are doubling the power of any car and especially when it's a classic car. But I want to add stiffness without adding a bunch of weight and one of the most important parts of my plan is this center roll hoop that's going in here because I'm not adding weight because the original car had this big girl in it and you'll notice also because this roll cage tubing is 40 millimeter and this stuff is two inch it's actually a bigger diameter meaning it's both stiffer and lighter by the way this roll cage tubing is cold rolled seamless 40 millimeter, it's FIA legal roll cage tubing. But it will mean that my roll bar will be both stiffer, lighter, and because it's further back and because it's a bigger hoop, it will actually stiffen the car much, much more. Now, obviously, in order to go from here through to here, we have to go through the car. And so I'm gonna cut some footage of me that I made a while ago now of me making the provisions to do that. So obviously the roll cage can't go from within the body to outside the body without first passing through the body. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this big star at bit and I'm going to drill through the body on the inside, from the inside here, outside, because there's no access. And then what we're going to have to do is we're actually going to have to cut down where these old heat events were in order to uh, still get the body on once the roll hoop is in. So that's already cut out, that's why we're doing it there. You may have noticed that I used one of these Starrett metal drill bits to cut through the fiberglass. Uh, this is a 51 mil bit. The reason why I've used one of these is because fiberglass is obviously glass and it absolutely, you can get through it with woodworking drill bits but it absolutely destroys them because you're cutting through glass. Nothing will obliterate, even metal. Nothing obliterates drill bits faster than fiberglass. So, hence, 51 mil starrett. I actually ordered this before I ordered my roll cage tubing. And so I ordered the wrong size, but it's coming anyway. So, just shows, good quality tools, never missed. So I'm now going to use a jigsaw to cut my slot up to my hole as much as I can. I don't have air tools at the minute. Uh, I don't have any on hand, so I've got to use electric tools. But the cool thing is that all of my electric tools are powered by the sun because, of course, my workshop is completely off grid and environmentally friendly. So, unlike Elon Musk, I'm actually building a car with the power of the sun completely off grid and environmentally friendly. And this may be powered by corn juice, so suck it, Elon Musk. <laughs> nicer than using a grinder. Whenever you can avoid using a grinder on fiberglass, do, because it just flings it everywhere and it's awful. Alright, next one now. I need to measure from this hole here to this hole on the opposite side. Unfortunately, that hole, thanks to the accident and me being able to now fit my hand inside the sill, this hole is a really long way away from where it once was. 
but I still need that measurement. What I've discovered is that this box section square here on the back of the chassis hasn't moved, thankfully, and is relatively unchanged. My set square. So I can measure from this point to that point, which is 1,200 and should be 45 millimeters. And then all I need to do is add the thickness of the sill because this hole is perfectly in the centre of the sill and the sill is 50 mil wide so half of this and half of that would be 50 millimetres so 1245 millimetres plus 50 millimetres and that is our measurement. Because my roll bar is going to come through here on an angle and there's going to be another part of the roll cage here I actually need to remove more material I was intentionally careful when cutting out because obviously I don't want to cut I want to cut as little as of the original GTM off as possible but also it's much easier to cut a little bit more off than it is to glue a bit more on so I now need to cut this piece out down here <laughs> shell clearance to fit our roll cage we need to be able to bend roll cage tubing obviously we need to take straight lengths of roll cage tubing and turn it into roll hoops and stuff and to do that we need a pipe bender now I have a pipe bender and this is it this is my Urkelina mini bender which is an incredibly expensive digital pipe bender and it's tiny and it's it's supposed to be portable but uh, you need to be the incredible Hulk to lift it. It's incredibly heavy. It weighs almost as much as I do. <laughs> so portable, kind of. But, um, but unfortunately, this Urkelina bender isn't big enough to bend roll cage tubing. Because roll cage tubing, well, the roll cage tubing that I've chosen anyway, is as strong as it could possibly be. Because obviously, if roll cage tubing bends easily, then it's not going to make a very good roll cage, is it? So this Herculina bender, as much as I love it, it just isn't up to the job. And I wasn't able to buy a bigger pipe bender because of the pandemic. So we've made one. So this is our giant monstrosity of a pipe bender. It is a Mad Max masterpiece and I didn't film building it because there are certain times when filming stuff makes it go twice as, like makes stuff take twice as long because you're moving cameras around, you're thinking of what to say, you're thinking of what to do, you're sorting out lights and all that time is time not spent actually making the thing. There are times when you just need to buckle down and make the thing. So, I didn't film making this, but let me walk you through just how we made it. So, we couldn't even get the raw materials. I was going to make my own pipe bender die, and I couldn't even get the raw materials to do that because all the local steel suppliers, after the first lockdown, were all in a mad rush to fulfill steel orders that they'd had in big industrial steel orders that they had before lockdown. So, they were all on all these big projects that you know bring in tens of thousands of euros and they weren't really bothered about me wanting a piece of <laughs> a piece of steel this big so this big pipe bender die actually came from a, a shop in england who were absolutely lovely i rang them up told them what told them what i needed and they sorted me out there will be a link to them in the description because they were absolutely massively helpful i didn't get any discount i didn't tell them who i was or anything um, but they were super super helpful and thank you to them because I absolutely mega couldn't have done this without them. All this red stuff is actually from a Harbour Freight type Chinese made pipe bender and I'll, sh I'll show you a photo of what it originally looked like and obviously it looks considerably different now. It came with these dies. Now 
a pipe bender like this that uses dies like this is for kind of bending like horrible agricultural p pipe and not tubing. It's not roll cage tubing, it's not for bending tubing, it's for kind of gas pipe and irrigation pipe and that kind of thing. It's uh, it's for, for really thick walled tubing, not for a nice, you know, thick wall pipe, not for nice tubing and it's completely ill fitted to this kind of job. That's why I didn't use it. I've cut it all apart and, and use this nice die because if you buy a pipe bender that uses this kind of dies, it will just kink your tubing and it's absolutely pointless and basically don't bother. I bought it for its raw materials and also for uh, this jack because I needed a huge jack because I wanted this to be hydraulically powered because that does a lot of the effort for me. You just you know, you just pump the jack and uh, it bends the tubing. Unfortunately, this hydraulic jack, being a cheap Chinese one, is dead and died within moments of us trying to use it. So, we are back to good old fashioned muscle. So, this is from an acro, which is the kind of uh, support that you use to hold up a building. This is a piece of my kitchen work unit um, for my kitchen worktop as is this and there is also a bit of uh, another small bottle jack in there as well that I use for bushes and there's a bunch of threaded bar and stuff uh, in there and like I said it's it's very Mad Max it's very thrown together and this whole thing requires so much force in order to bend the 40 mil roll cage tubing that it has to go on a big oak table outside and it has to be clamped down and then the oak table has to be clamped together in order that the uh, pipe bender itself doesn't rip the table apart. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a beast. But the way this actually works is, this is a ratchet, believe it or not, and you, you uh, hook it on, you, you take the lever around, the lever bends this around, and then you go on to the next tooth, bend it around, you go on to the next tooth, bend it around, and, uh, it's that, that's it basically and you can also put pins in if you want to limit how far it goes because obviously it has these big pins in it but uh, <laughs> obviously this pin controls the actual pack under itself so we've made a fully adjustable completely manual medieval pipe bender <laughs> and I, I still cannot believe that we've managed to pull it off now I know this looks like a car. It looks like something that you could put suspension on and then engine in and drive down a road. You really couldn't. This floor pan is gone. There's no strength left in it. There's no rigidity left in it. It's been crashed, it's been burnt. The metal edge is just trash. So the floor pan is no more. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to build Pandora here. Thanks to having the uh, roll cage tubing bender and thanks to having the engine here now, Pandora will actually be born on this, or rather reborn, on this side of the workshop. The, the floor pan that's there on the pallet is there for reference. And I'll save anything that I can, but truly, Pandora will be reborn here, like a phoenix from the flames, as it were. I've got all the chassis actually drawn out on the floor, you can't see it with the camera but uh, I need to redo it in tape, really. We've dragged too much across the floor since I drew it the first time. But uh, this engine needs to move back and we will start to assemble Pandora in this space here. Now, a lot of you, when I first, a lot of my lovely community that cares so much about me, which is amazing to me, but a lot of you said, when I first showed off Pandora, when I first made a video going, look what I've bought, a lot of people were very worried about me which is incredibly touching that, you know, a lot of people who I've never even met in some cases can be, can be so concerned about me and my well-being. But a lot of people said, I'm really worried about you, Oliver. What have you taken on? Can you do this? Oh, so, some people even said, don't even bother, just sell it. <laughs> like, don't even get into it because it's too much. But I've been building the skills that I need to do this my entire life, since I was, you know, this big. And... I'm loving making videos. I'm, I'm, I'm enthusiastic. It, it, 
building the house and building this car occupies every moment of every waking hour for me. I'm building cars in my sleep, I've got notebooks full of drawings, full of maths, full of working out, full of part numbers. I'm absolutely loving what I'm doing. And there are, believe it or not, there are a lot of YouTubers who, when they come to work, and YouTube, for us YouTubers, YouTube is work. And there's a lot of YouTubers who come to work and they are now just going through the motions. They, were, they once were enthusiastic and now they're just kind of here and they don't really enjoy, you know, talking to their communities and they don't really enjoy reading comments and they, they, they want to detach themselves from it all. I'm not like that. I love my job. I love coming to work. I love building this car. I love making videos. I love editing videos. I've never, in, in all honesty, I've never enjoyed editing in my entire life. I, I don't enjoy editing video at all, except for now. Lately, I've been loving editing videos. I get up at five o'clock in the morning, I pour myself a cup of coffee and I start editing videos with a big smile on my face. Like, I can't wait to edit and make videos. And I'm, I'm really, really enjoying myself. And none of this would be possible without you at home watching this video. You are contributing to my dream by just simply being at home and supporting this channel and, and recommending these videos to, my, to your friends and for being part of my community. So thank you so much. This video is dedicated to you. Because without you, none of this would be possible. I would just be a madman shouting at a camera. So please, if you have any comments or questions, don't hesitate to ask them down in the comments because I always take time to answer every single one of them and you never know, you might just inspire a video answering your comment just for you because I've, I've done that many times in the past. So thank you all for watching. Please be awesome to each other. If you're interested in, in, in the Facebook group, which we have a little Facebook community, that's all down in the description below, as are parts that are used in this video, you know, links to bits and stuff on Amazon, that's all down there as well. So if you're interested in any of that, take a look. Thank you all for watching. Please be awesome to each other and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye.